We have very high expectations for our PhD students, but hopefully these tips will be able to help you and encourage you as you navigate the program. Hi everyone, welcome to Tadi TV, where I bring the classroom to you. I'm Hannah John, and today I'm going to focus on three mistakes you might want to avoid if you're a PhD student. Stay tuned. So in my previous video, I looked at three mistakes you might want to avoid if you're a graduate school student. So that's, I think, applicable to both masters as well as PhD students. But today I wanted to focus specifically on PhD students just because I think you face an even more stressful <laughs> or uh, extended time at graduate school. Uh, there are different layers of expectations that are placed on you and we have many more PhD students coming into our program. So I did want to provide some sort of overview for you. The first mistake you might want to avoid as a PhD student is thinking of yourself as a student. Now, this doesn't mean <laughs> you don't need to learn. In fact, your professors, your faculty are, are always learning or constantly learning, engaging in research and doing deep analysis. But I think when I say don't think of yourself as a student in the perpetual sense of a student teacher relationship, we increasingly see you as future colleagues. And so we expect you to formulate ideas, engage in in-depth research, and certainly by the time of your dissertation, become an expert in a small area within your academic discipline. While your professors and thesis advisors are there to help guide you through the kind of academic writing process and your dissertation process, we increasingly expect a level of independence and initiative when it comes to engaging in academic research. Even if you don't have a complete answer or a very firm idea about a specific problem or issue, we will increasingly look to you for your ideas, for your initial or kind of preliminary analysis, and you shouldn't be shocked that we do so. Increasingly, you should become prepared to give an answer, of course, based on the data and the evidence that is out there. And so, yes, please don't continue continue to think of yourself just as a student. The second major mistake I would avoid as a PhD student is delaying academic writing. Academic writing does not begin with your dissertation. In fact, in many senses, the dissertation is a culmination of the research that you have been doing. But from the beginning of the program, you should be already thinking about and engaging in academic writing, whether that's in the form of publications, working papers, or papers to be presented at international or academic conferences. Now, a myth here is that you have to be an expert before you start writing. If that's the case, you'd never start. <laughs> We'd never start. But even if you think about a normal course in the early stages of your, say, PhD program, even during the class, you have a list and a wealth of academic literature that you're introduced to in that class. You should start summarizing, paraphrasing, filtering the literature, making sense of the theoretical debates that are out there. And as you're doing so, you hone not only your writing skills, but you're also able to identify potential gaps in the literature that you might want to fill in future research. And again, by filling these gaps in the literature, we will be providing our own scholarly contribution. I think I sound like a broken record to my own students, but from your first semester of your PhD program, I always encourage you <laughs> to start with your academic writing, even before you can start thinking about your thesis and your thesis topic and preparing for the dissertation and later for the dissertation defense, you have at least one publication that you have to complete beforehand. And it's great if you have a lot of kind of experience with the writing process and also presenting that research in a public setting. Please be reminded that you have great faculty who you can work with during the program. And yes, the longer you wait to actually start the research, uh, I think the more difficult it will be for you to actually start. The last mistake I would avoid as a PhD student is not teaching. I think just a side note here is that the teaching landscape in Korea has actually changed quite a bit since the time that I was a PhD student. Yes, once upon a time when I was a PhD student, I had the great opportunity as an honor to be able to teach one course at another university. And based on that particular course and also you know, teaching evaluations, I was able to thankfully get more teaching opportunities at other universities and programs. Now these were all part-time teaching opportunities. I was a full-time student at the time, but each teaching opportunity really gave me the experience and the, the platform from which to articulate and to communicate information about the subject matter and also even later on about my areas of research. I really think teaching is the best way to communicate information and insights and it really does force you to know your material. 
Now fast forward to today, and you actually need a PhD in many instances to actually apply for even part-time teaching positions. But don't let this discourage you, so we can broaden the idea of teaching. There might be opportunities for you to engage in teaching activities and initiatives, even within your own program. You might be able to have the chance to work as a teaching assistant for one of your professors. A lot of that might be limited to say some of the administrative issues that take place within the classroom. You do get a much more hands-on and insider's view into what goes into teaching and how you can actually prepare for that. You can also participate in study clubs or circles or research seminars where you are forced <laughs> essentially to look up the issues or the say kind of academic research within that field and to present on those on a very regular basis. This type of teaching and presenting is actually really great practice for you as you prepare for your later dissertation defense, but also as you prepare for academic conferences where you're presenting your own research in front of academic peers. So I hope my video was more helpful than stressful for you as a PhD student. And I would love to hear from you regarding you know, these three areas and what questions or, or comments you might have about those as a PhD student. So until next time here on Tari TV, bye.